Israeli forces creep along one of the so-called tunnels of terror. The military says they found this tunnel under a Gaza mosque, where they also say they located a stash of weapons. First, it was rocket fire. Now it's these tunnels that has led Israel to insist the military operation in Gaza must go on. The threat of Hamas militants reaching Israeli soil fills many with dread. This tunnel was eventually blown up. Israel's Prime Minister said today that there are many more to go. As of now, we have neutralized dozens of terrorist tunnels and we are determined to complete this mission with or without a ceasefire. And therefore, I will not agree to any proposal that does not allow the Israeli Defense Force to complete this work, which is important for the security of Israel's citizens. As the war rolls on, Israel is rallying to help its men in uniform. Here, Israelis from a supermarket chain fill bright pink bags to send to soldiers near Gaza. T-shirts and toothpaste and... Uh, Michelle Arditi says Israelis are firmly behind the war effort. You know, for the soldiers, you see what's going on now in the news. They go over there to help the country and some of them, they die for Israel. So we want to help, to help them and their family. She showed me how each bag comes with this card, expressing love for Israel and the safe return of the troops. But what's happening to Palestinians on the other side in Gaza appears far from her mind. You don't know what life is like. It's more important for us to see, you know, the, what's happening in Israel. Israel's media has been accused of not showing the true reality of the war in Gaza. Channel 2 is Israel's most popular channel. Its focus seems to be on military operations against Hamas and threats to Israeli civilians. But the channel's diplomatic correspondent, Udi Segal, insists they do give coverage to the killings in Gaza. If you're saying, are we showing less than the Arab channels? Yes. Are we showing less than the international channel? Probably yes, and I try to explain why. I think that you have most of your coverage in Gaza and some of it in Israel. In Israel, there's not much to see in your perspective, but I'm an Israeli channel and I need to, it's also part of a service. And the service is that every day there are like tens of sirens and people want to know exactly what happened and what happens to the rockets and how many people. Sure. So this is part sure. of our, uh, our broadcast. Limiting, so if, but if you're saying, so if, but uh, if you're do saying, we keeping our public eye shut to what's going on in Gaza, I will tell you the, no. But other Israeli journalists feel the TV coverage is sanitized. On the main news show around 8 o'clock, you would, if you'll see something for Gaza, it will be pushed way back, like uh, you might see it around 9 or 9.20. And you'll see very short clips. You probably won't see the very graphic images. You might see probably more IDF pictures. I would say that the notion of Palestinian suffering remains very abstract and remote for Israelis, where Israel suffering is very intimate and reachable. It's these kind of images that, for the most part, will be beamed into living rooms across Israel tonight. Soldiers held up as heroes on the front lines of a war Israelis overwhelmingly see as just. A war which may still have a long way to run.